The Pulse of Spokane is a broad show that showcases many different things in our community. Sponsored by Local 29 Firefighters Union, Well-Dressed Walrus, and Homes for You. Hello there and welcome to the Pulse of Spokane. My name is Emma Ollering. I am your host today. And I am here with Siavash Naji Talakar. Siavash, how are you doing? I'm doing well. Thank you so much. Thanks for coming on today. I know this is kind of a funny platform, but we're making it work. Um, so why don't you talk a little bit about your role at Wazoo currently in the Spokane campus and some of the research you're doing and just kind of your activities and you know work that you're doing there. Absolutely. Appreciate the opportunity. Um, I am currently a third year pharmacy student and I'm a dual degree pursuing, I'm doing a PharmD PhD degree at Washington State. So in addition to studying the pharmacy curriculum, uh, I work in a PhD research lab. I work in uh, Dr. Bhagavad Prasad's lab. Uh, he is a new instructor that has actually moved over from University of Washington to Wazoo in Spokane. Um, and it's part of Wazoo's uh, push to have more of an industry connection here at Spokane. And what I mean by industry is pharmaceutical industry connections. It's something that uh, this school hasn't had a, had a strength in. So he's been amazing to come over here. And he's actually, uh, in addition to being a professor and running a lab, he's our director of industry relations. Um, so I've been working in uh, previous labs prior to switching to his lab. And I worked uh, prior on uh, nicotine metabolism studies, looking at how menthol cigarettes are different from uh, normal cigarettes and how labeling affects those. Uh, I also worked on uh, marijuana or THC research, looking at how THC interacts with opioids, which is kind of a, a big deal nowadays, especially in Washington. Yeah, wow. We have our opioid crisis and a lot of people, especially elderly adults, are looking towards marijuana as a substitute for pain. But what happens when people take those drugs together uh, we know there's an interaction that could be potentially be uh, harmful interactions. And my current study right now, I work on a pediatric NICU unit at, with a, a study with Sacred Heart uh, Hospital here. And we basically look at looking at predicting the drug toxicity in these pediatric and NICU neonates and trying to predict that toxicity based off of urine or little blood samples so that we can have uh, less side effects with those, those neonates. Wow, you are busy. That's amazing work that you have done. Um, I'm curious, how has all of this been impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic? Have you been able to, obviously, are you continuing in the lab? Do you have to do stuff from home, online? How does all of that work? So our school has very robust and vigorous standards for keeping everyone safe. Uh, and that kind of started off with shutting down the campus initially. Uh, about two months ago now when everything was closed down for the quarantine. I've been blessed, the work that I'm doing right now is a review article. So I've been doing a lot of online computer work, typing, writing, okay. researching hours. Um, but we do have our lab still open and we have almost 10 individuals in our, in our lab. And what we've been doing is having like a shift work where we have one person that goes into the lab that's able to use the equipment, uh, but no one else is able to go into the lab there's very strict measures on who can be on campus. Uh, so it's certainly slowed down our lab work and our productivity and what we were able to produce. Uh, and it's affected all of the labs at Washington State University. So a lot of the research has come uh, slowed down, but we're still making progress and doing a lot of Zooming uh, online webinars, we're working together. Mm -hmm. So we're doing what we can uh, with the leadership of Dr. Prasad, we've been doing what we can to overcome any of these hurdles that the quarantine presents us. Yeah, wow. Well, I'm glad you guys are still able to, you know, get some of your work finished, even if it may be taking a little bit longer. Um, I'm also wondering, how are the resources in Spokane? I know you mentioned Sacred Heart. I mean, that's a hospital that is well acclaimed and people everywhere know how great Sacred Heart's resources are and like a lot of other medical facilities in Spokane. So what has it been like doing your research in Spokane itself and going to Wazoo in Spokane? Uh, I'll be the first to say I love I love my work I love research I specifically came to Wazoo 
to pursue this PharmD PhD degree because of the research, the, the people that are here, um, the environment, the, the characteristics of, of Northwestern Washington, Eastern Washington, uh, it really drew me here. Um, so it's been, it's been amazing. Uh, I've loved every minute of, of working here. Um, so it's been a big draw for me. I, I appreciate it. Yeah, well, it sounds like it. Um, and then has this passion and fascination for medicine always been in you? I'm curious how this all kind of began. I mean, I know you mentioned the past research and labs you have done, but when you were little and you're thinking about, oh, what do I want to do when I grow up? Was medicine always involved? Well, when I was little, I wanted to be an astronaut. Um, okay. <laughs> But then uh, my father is a doctor, and he always wanted me to kind of pursue the same pathway. And uh, But my life is completely backwards than what you might imagine. Um, I actually dropped out of college when I was 18. And uh, I moved to California, and I, I, I earned a job at a Ryzen Wireless franchise. And I started off as a sales representative for the company. Uh, after a few months, I worked my way up to a store manager. The company kept expanding. At the time, there was four locations, it expanded to 10 to 20. Um, so I, as a store manager, I saw an opportunity. I asked to move to their corporate location, took over inventory ordering. Um, as the company continued expanding, I took on more, more and more responsibilities, and I earned my title of director of operations after about two years. And I stayed with that company for almost 10 years and helped it grow oh, for- wow. Yeah, from four stores to about 150 stores, almost six, 700 employees across Nevada and California. Uh, so I had a successful business career prior. And what drew me to come back to school is actually my mother. Uh, when I was 27, I'm 33 now, so about six, seven years ago, my mother was diagnosed with colon cancer. And at the time, I had a uh, five-year-old sister. And it just seemed like an opportune time to... Uh, kind of rearrange my life and think about, you know, what what role does education play in what I want to achieve in my future and my career? In business, it's it's tough. You know, it's all about the the black and, and the red numbers, right? You have to mm -hmm. uh, kind of throw it in. I really appreciated the aspect that medicine could give me because as I was helping my mother, uh, I started learning about her medications, her anti-rejection medications and what she was going through. And unfortunately, she was then later diagnosed with liver cancer as well, and she had a liver transplant. Oh, I'm so sorry. So these things just kind of compounded one another, and, and it was my kind of responsibility to come back home and help take care of my mother and my sister while my dad had to basically uh, continue working as a physician to try and earn money, keep the health insurance mm -hmm. to take care of my mother. Thank God everything is fine. She's had her liver transplant now. She's doing great. She's actually oh, also good. in She's actually also in pharmacy school. Uh, she's a first year student at University of Arizona now. Oh, that uh, is so cool. That's a great so, story. And we have fun conversations at, at dinner when, when we uh, meet up with one another, all drug talks, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's great. What a cool story. Um, Just to kind of wrap it up, I am wondering what keeps you motivated? What you know, gives you that drive to want to continue in this really rigorous field? I mean, obviously you just mentioned your mother, but is there another leader or mentor you've had that's really, you know, inspired you to want to pursue this? Absolutely. Um, and it might sound kind of cheesy in a way, but but children, these little kids, I've, I've worked tremendously with Big Brothers Big Sisters organization. Um, I did yeah. my master's. Uh, thesis report at Phoenix Children's Hospital, working with the children there um, on a separate project. And now my project is focused on pediatric NICU unit. And we're basically trying to help predict drug toxicity uh, for these children because a lot of drugs, you know, for example, out of 400 drugs that are prescribed to children, only 20 or 30 of them are tested on children. So the rest of those are used on, as off-label on these kids, these neonates. And that leads to a tremendous amount of uh, complications. About 20% of all drugs that are prescribed to children result in some sort of adverse effect. And our job in our lab is to create these kind of artificial intelligence models that can help physicians at the hospital predict what's the result if I give this drug to this patient based off of their drugs, uh, the patient's basically blood samples or, or urine samples. So we're hoping to integrate these kind of systems into 
blood pressure cuff monitor. So basically we can take a quick blood sample, take their blood pressure, and tell the doctor, hey, 20 milligrams of this drug is perfect for this child, but if any more or any less based off of their actual precision-based medicine could be lethal or could not be effective. And that's huge for these neonates that weigh, you know, less than a pound or two pounds because we just don't know what the effect of drugs are on them. And our lab is working to create artificial intelligence that can tell physicians what's the dosing that's effective for these children so that we can basically help this very small population, but very vulnerable population at the moment. And, and so these kids, I just love working with kids and they're kind of what motivate me to, to keep pushing. Well, that is amazing. And we really, really appreciate your work, Yavash. And good luck in the rest of your studies. I hope that COVID-19 allows you to get back in the lab soon. And um, thank you everyone for watching the Pulse of Spokane. Have a great day. Thank you. We believe every person is created in the image of God with immeasurable beauty and worth that people should not be defined by their present condition or past mistakes. We are all broken. We need each other. Healing for our brokenness begins with connection, with understanding how much we are loved by a good God. And with healing comes change, the potential for joy and meaning. No one was created for mere survival on the streets, for an existence blurred by mind-numbing substances. Each person is created with a purpose, a unique gift no one else can offer the world. Our job is to help them rediscover it. Real people, real change. Union Gospel Mission. Welcome to Apex Plaza, Spokane's one-stop cannabis destination. Apex Cannabis features thousands of economy, value, and luxury cannabis products. Canagear features hemp-based CBD products, glass, goods, and gear. Stop by 1325 North Division to experience the Apex difference. This product has intoxicating effects and may be habit forming. Marijuana can impair concentration, coordination, and judgment. Do not operate a vehicle or machinery under the influence of this drug. There may be health risks associated with the consumption of this product. For use only by adults 21 and older, keep out of the reach of children. The economy is getting stronger, banks are lending again, and interest rates are at historic lows. Now is a great time to buy your dream home. The caring and knowledgeable professionals at Homes for You have been helping people just like you for over 20 years. They take the time to listen to what you want and will help you find just the right home in Washington or Idaho. Real estate is what we do at Homes for You, 928 5782, or visit online at homes, the number four, youspokane.com. Hi, this is Kurt Stockwell with Well-Dressed Walrus. We are a local website design and development company here in Spokane. What we do is build beautiful, usable websites for local businesses. A website needs to be beautiful. It needs to be usable for your users, your customers, and yourself. Contact us anytime. We'd love to talk with you about your online marketing. Thanks for watching. Ask the host a question, recommend a guest, or check out any of our other programs on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or SpokaneTalksMedia.com. Sponsored by Local 29 Firefighters Union, Well-Dressed Walrus, and Homes for You.